Hi everyone on YouTube and all the NFL YouTube prognosticators and football fans everywhere. This is Andrew Warren, back here once again, giving you my thoughts about week 4 and my picks for week 5 for the 2023 NFL season. Check it out. Well, if you're wondering why I'm not wearing a Patriots shirt today instead of a Red Sox shirt today, it's because I'm dedicating this video for honor of Tim Wakefield, who so has treatedly passed away from brain tumor or brain cancer, whatever you guys call it. But, you know, well, today it's a big loss for the Boston community. As you know, I'm not in big into baseball, but I like the Red Sox. They're my home team. But still, nonetheless, Tim Wakefield was one of the... One of my favorite pitchers in of all time, and one of the one of them besides Tim Wake, uh, besides Pedro Martinez and all that. But that being said, it's just I'm just dedicating this honor because I'm from the Greater Boston area. Everybody around here know, knows who Tim Wakefield is. He was just a remarkable guy. He was just a great one. And yeah, this is his shirt, by the way. I'm wearing too. Just letting you know. But. It, it's just, he was just one of the great greatest knuckleball pitchers of all time, and it's not even close to that. And it, and it, his story is an amazing story to bring into the majors. He started from the Pittsburgh Pirates. He caught him because he, he was struggling down there, but he never gave up. He signed to the Red Sox, and he, he spent 17 seasons and helped broke the curse of the Bambino on that. So he was one of the, he was a great guy and a great knuckleball pitcher. So this video is dedicated to Tim Wakefield. And now his wife has pancreatic cancer too, which is very bad too. So, so anyways, it's rest in peace, Team Wakefield. You're one. You're one of a kind pitcher. So, anyways, my let's continuing on from my thoughts about Week Four. Uh, my thoughts about uh, and for straight up, I went really good. I went twelve and four straight up, one of the best so far. So it's pretty good. But on the downside. I guess the spread, I went 6-9-1. And, and over-under did my best this year for over and under. So I went 2-2 two and two on that one. So I'm 4-10 and 10 overall in the year and all that. But all now for straight up, I'm 37-27 overall. 29-32-2 and two overall in the year. I still have a shot of getting a, over, above 500. So hope we can do that. In the in the over and under, I went, uh, I'm 4-10 and 10 so far. So anyways, my thoughts about week 4. Detroit and Green Bay. I have to say this now. Um, Jordan Love, yeah, he's a great player. But the momentum right now is under Detroit's side. To say the least. I'm thinking this is something... I'm I'm probably going to be a bandwagon for Detroit right now for some strange reason. Well, I'll, get, I'll explain why. For Detroit, they're playing... They did what they needed to do this offseason. And, and so far, it's developing their defense right now. And it's working out really well. So... That's pretty good for Detroit's part on that one. As for Green Bay, maybe they can work on some defense on their own, to say the least. You know, not saying I'm not saying anything bad about Jordan Love. I mean, I think Jordan Love is a great quarterback, and he needs some defense support to help him. So if they can give him that, this could be a tough division between those two teams. Buffalo and Miami, it just goes to show you, um, Miami went to 70 points to 20 points this week. And by all means, Buffalo just showed up to play. And they did. And it was in Buffalo. So, pretty much to say the least. Philadelphia and Washington. Well, to say the least, Philadelphia got the win. But, to say matters time, Washington it was Washington was pretty much a close, close to that. Tampa Bay and New Orleans. Well, Tampa Bay did what they needed to do to get a Division one, and they did. As for uh, Jacksonville and Atlanta... Jacksonville need got a win in, in London. That's what it was really good about. As for Atlanta, as for Atlanta, they got to do some thinking. Now Cleveland and Baltimore, uh, Baltimore they they just out dominated Cleveland. It just goes to show you. Cincinnati and Tennessee, Tennessee as an underdog, bet them. That's all I could say. Tennessee as an underdog, you got to bet them. <laughs> if they win. But if they're favored, they don't win. That's basically what it is. The Rams and the Colts. Well, I think this is a good bounce back um, win for the Rams. If I'll say this, they look like they're going to be a title contender for uh, for the wild card at least. So that would be pretty good. Uh, uh, 
Here comes Bella. <laughs> Say hi, Bella. I guess she wanted to make a little visit, so that's fine. I guess that's fine. You could stay. Let's stay over here, okay? For for Minnesota and the up in the Carolina Pan in the Carolina Panthers. Hey, Kirk Cousins had a pick six, but he still got the win. But like I said, it was not a prime time game. It was a day game. So hey, what can you do? Well, I'll say this one: Pittsburgh and Houston. Given Houston, what's Houston's credit for? C.J. Strong has been impressing me all this so far, and so far he exactly did that. I gotta tell you, as of right now, C.J. Strong looked like he's the best quarterback coming out of Ohio State. I'll say that because C.J. Stroud is, could be a phenomenal one, and I might, might regret my Rookie of the Year pick, and I think C.J. Stroud might possibly may take it now. Hey, we'll see. But to say the least, C.J. Stroud has been dominating games from week from the first four weeks, and it's not even close. But hey, let's see how it goes on that one. So, the Chargers in Las Vegas. Well, Vegas got the... The Chargers got the win. Vegas, they still need some little momentum. And just saying, Josh McDaniels, not the guy for the Raiders. That's all I'm saying. And my Patriots and the Dallas Cowboys. We finally get to that. I'll say this right then and now. Dallas, good team. Good for them. Uh, Super Bowl team? No. But as for my Patriots... Losing Matthew Judon and Christian Gonzalez, our season's over. Plain and simple. And yeah, I have nothing bad against Mac Jones. I have nothing against Bailey Zappi they pulled in. No matter who's that quarterback, that team's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. So, to say the least, they suffered the worst loss in the Belichick era as of right now. And for my own sake, at least, I'm saying this right now. Belichick needs to go. I'm sorry to say it. I've been a supporter of Belichick for so long. But the time has come. Great coach. Hall of Fame coach. That's all I can tell you. But the way this is going, I don't think he's going to get Don Shula's record. I really don't think so. To say the least on that, the way it's going right there, he's not getting that record. He might as well step down. I don't know if he's, that's going to happen. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but time will tell. But that, it, it, it has to come. All good things must come to an end. And I got to say, Belichick's coaching career must come to an end. So that's all I can tell you on this point and on. I think getting a new coach would help Mac Jones, to say the least. Maybe, but I don't know for sure how that one will pin out. But I don't really think the way it's going right now. But I'm not going to pick sides about Belichick or Jones or get rid of Jones or get rid of Zappy or anything like that. It's not me. Even though I do think he has another two years left in his rookie contract, I still think if get him another coach, see what he can do and go from there. That's all I can tell you. The 49ers in Arizona. The San Francisco came into play and that's it. Arizona did Arizona things. Oh yeah, in Denver and Chicago. I kind of was... Uh, I, I said it in Justin Bridgewater's um, live stream that, that Ju Justin Fields would have a, have a, get a forced fumble and Denver's going to come for a touchdown. Well, technically, it was an interception return for a touchdown, but so technically it was kind of wrong, but it was not a fumble. It was an interception. Hmm. The Kansas City Chiefs and the New York Jets. I don't know why, what's going on with the Taylor Swift thing, but damn it. Oh, excuse my language, but why not? You know, it's been working out for the Chiefs. Might as well go continue doing it. I mean, might as well. <laughs> He went in ball games, might as well. I'm not a big Taylor Swift fan, but you know what? Might as well. 
might, might, might as well hang around there. They keep winning ball games, so might as well do it, you know? Hey, whatever helps the Chiefs win. Yeah, what can you do? The Seattle Seahawks and the New York Giants. Well, the Giant, the Seattle Seahawks are not playing around. That's all I can tell you. As of the New York Giants, no trade on Barkley. They're not a team. So, that's my thoughts on week four. Let's get on to my week five picks. Okay, let's kick off to the Thursday night game. The Washington Commanders and the Chicago Bears. The way the Chicago Bears are going, they're probably one of the worst defenses in football right now. I can't trust that. So, I'm taking the Washington Commanders in Washington over the Chicago Bears in this game. On the line now. Washington's favored by six in this game. I'm going to take Washington minus six. Over and under, it's 44. I'm going to go under 44. The Buffalo Bills and the Jacksonville Jaguars in London. Now, this is the second game for Jacksonville and London. They got the first one. Chances are they might not get the second one because Buffalo is looking for redemption after what happened a couple of years ago when they had the 9-6 to six loss. So, I'm just saying this. I've, and that was with Urban Meyer, by the way. They're probably looking for redemption for that. And I'm thinking Buffalo is going to be looking for that redemption. So much that I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills as a designated home team to win over the Jacksonville Jaguars to win this game. On the line now, this is where I'm going to get Jacksonville. Buffalo is favored by 5.5 in this game because I'm going to take Jacksonville plus 5. Over and under, it's 48. I might go over 48 in this game. The Houston Texans and the Atlanta Falcons. Now, as I mentioned for TJ Straw, he's been impressing me. He's been impressing me so much that I'm going to take the upset in this one and taking Houston over the Atlanta Falcons in this game, in Atlanta. On the line, though, Houston's, I mean, Atlanta's trained by two and a half in this game. I'm taking Houston plus two and a half. The Tennessee Jaguars and the Indianapolis Colts. Like I mentioned, the Tennessee the Titans as an underdog, yeah, they usually win games. So that's why I'm going with this one. As of right now, for Indianapolis, a lot of injury problems right now. But I'm taking, I'm still taking Tennessee over the Indianapolis Colts in this game in Indianapolis. On the lineup, Tennessee is Indianapolis favorite by one in this game. I'm going to take Tennessee plus one. The Detroit Lions and the Carolina Panthers. Now, the way I saw from Carolina, how they handled Minnesota, they all, even though they did get a pick six for a touchdown, but that was Kirk Cousins. This is not Kirk Cousins they're playing. They're playing Detroit. They're playing Jared Goff. And to say the least, Detroit is going to be running over Carolina. Hate to say it. So I'm going to take the Detroit Lions in Detroit over Carolina in this game. On the line now, Detroit's fade by eight and, this, eight and a half in this game. I'm going to take Detroit minus eight and a half. The Miami Dolphins and the New York Giants. Well, to say the least on that one. Hey, come on, Bella. <laughs> well, she she wants to peek in, so okay. <laughs> we interrupt this program to give you a special cat presentation. <laughs> I know, Bella wants some attention right now. <laughs> Anyways, continuing on for um, the Miami Dolphins and the New York Giants. So, for the Miami Dolphins, they're probably going to get... They got their first loss. They're suffering first loss, so I think it's probably a pin down. I'm kind of concerned about the defense for Miami. I don't think they have the defense to do it. So, anyways, that being said, but I think they will beat out the New York Giants in this game. So, I'm going to take the Miami Dolphins or the New York Giants in this game. On the line, though... In, oh, it's, by the way, it's in Miami. On the line, though, the, New York, the Miami Dolphins are favored by 9.5 in this game. I'm going to take Miami minus 9.5. The New Orleans Saints and the New England Patriots. My New England Patriots, by the way. Like I said, without Matthew Judon and Christian Gonzalez, they're both missing some time. Our season's done. Plain and simple. Our season is totally, totally toast. So, our playoff pitcher is out. Our season's done. All we got to left to do now is play for pride, and I think that's what we're going to do right in this game. But, but to say the least, though, Derek Carr is in, having struggles as well. He's having some growing pains, too, besides Mac Jones. But to say the least, but to say the least on that one, I think... They're going to keep this game tight. I think that's what it's going to be. But I don't think it's going to be the Patriots winning this game. As of right now, might as well fight for a better draft pick. So, 
As a right, so I'm gonna take the New Orleans Saints over the New York Giants at home in this game. On the line, though, New Orleans is favored by the Patriots are favored by one and a half in this game. I'm taking the Patriots plus. I mean, the New Orleans Saints plus one and a half. That's how not confident I'm in my, my Patriots right now. The Baltimore Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, for the Baltimore Ravens' sake, I really like how they're handling things this year. So far, it's pretty good. Now, to say the least on that one. So, to say the least. You know, to say the least for um for Baltimore, for Baltimore though, I really like their chances against Pittsburgh because... Pittsburgh, they have they're having some issues right now, and they're still favored in this game. I, I don't get why. I don't understand it. So, anyways, that being said, I'm gonna take the Baltimore Ravens over the Pittsburgh Steelers in this game. On the line, though, the Steelers are favored by four in this game. I'm gonna take the Pittsburgh. I mean, the Baltimore Ravens plus four. The Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Las Vegas Rams. Now, for this game. Now, for this game, I would say this is going to be a really too close of a game. But I think the Philadelphia the Eagles can pull this one out. But it's going to be too close to call. So, anyways, that being said, I think um, I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles over the LA Rams on in LA. On the line, though, that's so I'll give the Rams this. The Eagles are favored by five in this game. It could be a close call. I'm going to take the Rams plus five. The Cincinnati Bengals and the Arizona Cardinals. I understand... Why the the why the Cincinnati Bengals are underdogs in this game, but the Arizona Cardinals on this one, I'm not too confident on the Cardinals either. But I understand that they have no protection for Joe Burrow. I can understand that. So, anyways, that being said, I still think they have a chance of winning this game. So I'm gonna take the Cincinnati Bengals over the Arizona Cardinals in this game. On the line, though, Cincinnati, I mean, the Arizona Cardinals are favored by four in this game. I'm going to take Cincinnati plus four. The New York Jets and the Denver Broncos. I have no faith on both teams. No faith at all. But I think the, Jet, the Jets are more dominant team than the Broncos. Despite... No, Denver winning last week and the Jets losing last week. I think this is the time for the Jets to bounce back. So I'm going to take the New York Jets over the Denver Broncos in this game. On the line, though, that, that's my upset, by the way. On the line, though, the, the Broncos are made by three in this game, which I have no idea why. I'm taking the Jets plus three. The Kansas City Chiefs and the Minnesota Vikings. This is where I'm the non-prime 10 game. I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings. Because of Patrick Mahomes. So, I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs over the Minnesota Vikings in this game. In the Minnesota in this game. On the line now, Kansas City is favored by 6 in this game. I'm going to take Kansas City minus 6. Sunday Night Football. The big NFC showdown. San Francisco 49ers and the Dallas Cowboys. Now, for this game, I expect to be a really, really close game. So close, but I think it's going to go have high, point, high points on this one. So... It's in San Francisco. If it was in Dallas, I would have gone the opposite direction. But I'm going to take the San Francisco 49ers over the Dallas Cowboys in this game. On the line, though, San Francisco is favored by 3.5 on this game. I'm going to take San Francisco minus 3.5. Over and under is 45. I'm going to shoot for over 45. Monday Night Football, the Green Bay Packers and the Las Vegas Raiders. I have more confidence in Green Bay over the Las Vegas Raiders in this game. But to say the least of that, I'm going to take the Green Bay Packers over the Las Vegas Raiders in this game. On the line, though, Green Bay is favored by one in this game. I'm going to take Green Bay minus one. Over and under, it's 44. I'm going to shoot for over four, under 44. Okay, if you want to know why, if you want to know I'm missing games, I don't. But this is the beginning of the bye weeks. So, for buys this week, the Cleveland Browns, the LA, LA Chargers, and the Seattle Seahawks, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you're on Fantasy Football or Dynasty League, if you have... Any of the teams on there, like on the Cleveland Browns, like you got the Browns defense, or you got the LA Chargers, um, like Keenan Allen, or you have Justin Herbert, or you have Geno Smith for the Seattle Seahawks, or Baker Mayfield for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, bench them this week, because they won't be playing this week, so it's the start of the bye weeks, starting in week five. So anyways, continuing on, shout outs this week is my good old buddy, the Blind Canadian Cat, 
check her out and then check out the rest of the NFL YouTube prognosticator game page in the description down below right here. Until then, this is Andrew Horn signing off saying rock out and good luck to you, all of your picks this week.